So today we're looking at two pieces of rangeland, um, two different pastures in the same ranch that are managed very differently. Uh, grazing management is different. This pasture we're looking at here, it's in really good shape. It's good healthy land. It's got a lot of cover, a lot of uh, diversity in it. It's got a very few undesirable species. Uh, broom snakeweed is, is the undesirable one out here. And this particular pasture on this ranch, they run uh, yearlings. Um, this pasture here is used in the springtime and in the fall when, when the cattle come in. They're preconditioned in this pasture for a, for a short time, uh, about a month more or less. That happens around March, February, March. Uh, before the growing season, the cattle in, are in here grazing. Then the cattle are distributed to the rest of the ranch where they're uh, continuously grazing the, the bigger pastures for the entire growing season. So they go in around March and they come out of the bigger pastures uh, around the end of October in the end of the growing season. The other side of the fence here is one of the bigger pastures where the cattle are continuously grazed the entire growing season. This has been going on for over uh, 10 years and uh, at a glance the land doesn't look too bad it, it looks like it's in in good shape uh, got some good rain last year in this part of the world uh, this is uh, eastern New Mexico and so if you look at the two you can see a lot of cover and very little broom snakeweed other than on that two track road and then you come over to this side and it, it still has a lot of cover the grass is growing different. The blue grandma is, is not really a uh, bunch grass anymore. It's kind of turning into a sod now. Blue grandma. There's a lot more broom snake. But well, what we're going to do today is we're going to simulate rainfall on on a sample from both sides of the fence and, and see what happens to the rain when it falls out here. How much of it gets into the soil and how much of it runs off and ends up in the gullies and, and uh, doesn't really benefit the plant. So we're back at the barn here and uh, we collected our two soil samples. Um, this one here on the right hand side is from the side of the fence uh, where uh, the cattle graze in the dormant season, uh, gets the entire growing season of rest. This side of the fence, this sample was from the side of the fence where that gets grazed the entire growing season and gets uh, doesn't get any uh, growing season rest. We're going to pour uh, the same amount of water on here, 16 ounces of water. We're going to pour it on here, simulate rainfall, and see what happens. Uh, over here on these two trays in the front, uh, the water that doesn't infiltrate into the soil is going to run off of here, through here, and land in these two trays. And the one that infiltrates all the way through the soil is going to go all the way through and land here in the bottom. And this represents a rainfall event. Uh, what happens? out here when you get rain uh, how much of it are we really harvesting and how much of it is running off the land and ending up in the gullies and uh, a lot of times it sits above the ground evaporates it doesn't get into the soil so we're gonna pour this water in here and see what happens You can see this side's getting a lot of runoff. This side's getting very little runoff. It's uh, staying on, on the land. Uh, we got quite a bit of runoff over here. You can take a look inside and see that uh, the runoff came up dirty. We got about twice as much. The runoff that we did get on here, we got a lot less and it's very clean water. You can see we got dirty runoff. You can see some erosion happening right here. The water's moving across the land off the soil. On this side, a little bit of runoff. Most of it stayed on the land. And whatever ran off the land came out pretty clean. 
and you can see even closer underneath it's dripping there it went all the way through infiltrated through the soil you can see this other side it's it's completely dry we didn't get hardly any infiltration on the soil here so we uh we got our infiltration on this side our runoff on this side okay we got our infiltration down here okay this side got quite a bit of runoff okay you can see that the runoff came out really dirty um, And on this side, we got really, really clean runoff, okay? And we got a lot more runoff off of this side with a lot more erosion than we did on this side, okay? So so we poured 16 ounces of water into each sample. Now let's measure them and, and see how much of it ran off and how much of it uh, got into the soil, okay? We'll start with this one here, okay? Very dirty runoff. Quite a bit of it. 16 ounces went in, eight ounces came back, okay? We got eight ounces uh, of runoff, 50%, okay? That means that, that in, our, in a rainfall event, 50% of the rain that landed on, on this sample here actually got into the soil and is benefiting the grasses and the plants on the land. The other runs off, ends up in the gullies, uh, eventually in the arroyos around here um, does does nothing for for the for the grasses and for the plants and the vegetation out here and so so we got 50 percent runoff on this side okay this is the other sample you can see there's a little bit of litter in there runoff came out pretty clean okay not very much of it okay. set it there okay about three ounces more or less so we got 16 went in three ounces ran off off the, the land and ended up here okay that means that uh 80 percent of the of the of the rain that, that landed on this sample got into the soil and 20 percent of it ran off okay Versus about 50 to 55 percent got into the soil here, and the rest of it ran off. Ended up in the gullies and the arroyos. Okay, but if you get if you get 14 inches of rain on your place, and only seven inches get into the soil, then it's like you only got seven inches of rain. Okay, you're still in a drop. Okay, you except that. We can't really control the weather out here. We can't control the rainfall patterns. But we can control how we manage our lands. And we, we can control the amount of, of moisture that we harvest over here into our soils. And uh, it makes a big difference the way that you manage our, the lands. Uh, you can see both these samples here. They both got grazed. They're both on the same ranch. The difference is the management. As ranchers, we uh, we look at the land, and, and, and sometimes the land's a little bit degraded, and, and we say, "Well, you know, it, it looks this way because it hasn't rained," and uh, and that's that's half of it. Um, the other half is uh, when we do get the rain, are we harvesting the rain that we get? And so, okay. and and uh, we can take a closer look here take a closer look here and, and see what's really going on you can see the water didn't get into the soil okay it's still dry down here okay water di didn't infiltrate soils are still dry four inches okay water didn't make it down that far okay most of it most of it just stayed right here okay Let's take this one apart. It's got a lot more infiltration. Okay. Still pretty dry because it was a, a quick rainfall event. Okay. But you can see how much came off. And, and, and the real difference 
is the amount of roots on this side of the fence, okay? The amount of roots makes a world of difference. These living roots are what breaks up compaction on your land, okay? A living root. Even though it's December right now and these grasses are dormant, the roots are still alive below, okay? We still have a living root and there's still activity going on down here. The entire uh, dormant season, this grass depends on uh, the amount of root that it has down there to make it through the winter and wake back up in the spring, okay? That's the amount of roots on this sample here, okay? Same type of grass. You can see this one falls apart a lot, okay? I'm having a hard time keeping it all together. But you can see that this thing has roots. They're not very deep, very shallow roots on this side of the fence. You come, if you go into a drought, two or three year drought like happens around here, you go into a drought with roots that look like this versus, see it's not even staying together, roots that look like this, okay, your chances of coming out, out of that drought and still being in the cattle business are a lot better when your lands are in good shape and you got a, a deep living root in your soil. Makes a big difference. The other difference is that on this side of the fence, you got a lot of diversity. You got several different kinds of grasses. This side of the fence, all I was able to find is that sodabound blue grama. Okay. This side of the fence, I found the uh, about four or five different grasses. Okay. And so the more different types of roots you got in your soil, the longer that you have a, a continuous living root in the ground. Okay. It also provides a lot more cover. Uh, it uh, insulates both soils from from the wind, insulates them from the sun, from uh, from the elements. Okay. In this soil, uh, the the soil temperature fluctuates quite a bit because there's not a lot of cover on it. Okay, they get really cold at night. Then it then you get a really hot day and it gets really hot, all within a 24 hour period. Okay, soil temperatures change on this side of the fence. Not as much. Okay, you got a lot more insulation in there. And that makes a big difference on the microbial activity that goes on in these soils, even on rangelands. Um, this uh, soil health movement, it really kind of started on cropland, but it uh, it's slowly evolving into rangelands. And it's uh, the principles of soil health are really no different on, on rangeland than they are on cropland. Um, Maximizing a continuous living root is the first one. The second one is maximizing biodiversity. The third one is maximizing cover. And the fourth one is minimizing disturbance, okay? In the cropland world, when we talk about minimizing disturbance, we're really referring to putting a plow in the ground, uh, breaking up the soils, tillage, that kind of stuff, okay? We're also talking about applying uh, herbicides and pesticides and things like that, okay? On rangeland, uh, minimizing disturbance, what it really means is, is maximizing rest, okay? Um, grazing your land in, in a way that uh, that you give each pasture the maximum amount of rest, okay? Um, easiest way to do that is, is, uh, is getting on a rotation. Uh, the more pastures you've got, the, the more rest you've got in, in each pasture, okay? So... So really, the, the, the principles of soil health are no different on rangeland than they are on dark land.